Hi, this is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Lady Chow Fung and Adam for Wuxia Weekend, and we are going to be talking about Curse of the Golden Flower, a 2006 Zhang Yimou movie. This is a family drama set inside the Imperial Palace during the Tang Dynasty. There's obviously more to the film than that, and we're going to get into it. Uh, it stars uh, Chow Yung Fat and Gong Li, and it's, um, I don't know, uh, it's an interesting movie. Uh, what what do you guys think about the film? Because I don't know. I, I didn't really get your reaction yet on whether you liked it or you didn't or were middle of the road. What were your initial reactions? I enjoyed the movie. Um, it made my dysfunctional family look pretty normal. <laughs> um, yeah, so I liked it. I loved the coloring, the elaborate set, and the elaborate costuming was beautiful. Um, the fight scenes were awesome, and just the storyline was so so interesting and extreme. I really liked it. Yeah, I I really enjoyed this one, too. It's the one out of these three movies I'd never heard of, and so I thought, oh, maybe this is going to be kind of a downturn or something. But I was... You know, I talked about with the previous two how I, I, I had a bit of a disconnect with them because of the structure or the twists and so on. With this, because it was just a, I guess, straightforward isn't the best word for this, but it was a linear story. I was very invested in the characters in this one. And, uh, it, yeah, I mean, the colors were brilliant. Just, I mean, it's for a movie that's set very much in a very kind of insular location, it, it, it was very involving too. It uh, it used that very well, but uh, yeah, I, I I I I very much enjoyed this movie. Yeah, and uh, I um I I like this movie as well. I I have to say, I over time my opinion has changed. It's sort of swung, you know, from one end to the other end, um, and I I I I always find myself kind of going back and forth on this movie for some reason, <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know why that is. Uh, but I enjoy it. I think I think uh, after you know, after you know, years now, I've sort of come to the point where if I were going to rank the three movies, I would rank House of Flying Daggers as my favorite. This is my mm -hmm. second, and Hero is my third. Um, and uh, the reason is House of Flying Daggers is the one that I'm like I can watch that again and again, no problem at all. Yeah, it's like a pleasure I... to watch. This one I will watch again. I might be a little bit reluctant, but I will watch it and I'll enjoy it. <laughs> and and Hero, I always kind of put off watching. Um, so I and I think just because of the I don't know something about it. Um, I mean, I Hero's still like very it, but... very cold. You're not you don't like I said. You just you're very. It's it, I, I I enjoyed watching it, but you, I just feel very distant from any of the characters, and yeah. it's kind of very intellectual rather than emotionally involving in any way. Yeah, this, this yeah more... Hero was more go go ahead more artsy. Hero mm -hmm. was more artsy for me, and mm. so it was more... I wasn't as invested in the characters as I was in House of Flying Daggers. Um, I really, really like that one. That one's my favorite out of the three so far. So, yeah. Now, would you would you not consider this one artsy, or would you consider this artsy as well? Or just less artsy than the... <laughs> this one is less artsy. I mean, just... I don't know. I didn't feel like the fight scenes were artsy the coloring and the visual is very beautiful and artsy but i didn't think the styling of the movie was mm -hmm. artsy as i okay. did with hero the more of the fighting in hero for me was more not traditional and grounded it was more um dance like and flighty and light skill oriented i guess but this um, is more grounded and more definitely hand-to-hand -hand combat, and not so much up in the air. And uh, yeah, I think groundedness. I think groundedness is a good point because it's like that. I would say this movie is kind of artsy, but the artsiness all serves the the story and the yeah. characters and the plot that you don't you don't think about it being artsy, even though there is a lot of artiness to it. It just it just yeah. it just fits with it. Well, because oh, the colors no. kind of all add to the the sense of of opulence of being inside of uh, an imperial palace, and so if you're going to have extra like of the three movies that you know yeah. use extensive color, if, if, if this is probably the one where it might make the most sense, um, because you know it's it's 
it's an imperial palace so of course <laughs> it's going to have gold and and all and all these shiny objects um but i guess i guess uh and to get to to lady chow fung's point i, I did want to mention uh 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 ching sui tung did the uh the fight choreography in uh in this one mm-hmm. as well and uh I, I, I this came up when I, I I posted about this in the uh, wuxia community and on Twitter. Uh, do do you guys consider this a wuxia film? Uh, like, does it does it feel like a wuxia movie to you, or does it feel like it's another category of film? I would say no, maybe. I mean, I wouldn't make a serious argument about it, but it, it does, like I said, it does feel a courtly intrigue, family drama, tragedy. You know, I mean, it's 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 closer to something like Hamlet than your typical Wuxia film kind of thing. But okay. uh, um, it has elements of a Wuxia movie. It's more. I don't know. To me, it's more grounded and more historical than um, some others that I have enjoyed. So I don't know. It's kind of borders on that on that line for me, I guess. Okay. It's more of a a drama than because then the fighting is you know even without the fighting it would have been a good movie, but I, I don't know. Yeah, because the um. So I'm sort of split on this because on the one hand, I, I like I said before, I I feel like it's more drama than a wuxia. I don't really think of it as wuxia. At the same time, um, as a if you look at like older Zhang Yimou movies, you can sort of like it feels like maybe his version of wuxia. Um, but but for me, the, the the telling factor is I find myself waiting for fight scenes to occur a lot, and that's usually a sign that I'm not in a wuxia movie. If there's like, I don't know what, I don't know what the right rate, like, like I, I don't define it the way other people do. For me, it's about how much sword play and, 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 and wuxia style fighting there is in the movie. And, and obviously the other themes are important, but when you're watching a film, I feel like that's the most, the most uh, obvious sign that you're in wuxia. And, and in this movie, you're just spending a lot of time waiting for the fight scenes. When they happen, they're they're wonderful, um, but but they there is sort of a, a gulf. But like like I don't remember the exact number of them. And there are, when I when I tried to count, there were more than I had remembered there being. But there was still definitely a lot of time in between each fight sequence. Um, yeah. It's like it's one of those things. It's it's like you know the genre of a story versus the setting. It's like I could see this being a setting where wuxia movies could take place. You know, it's mm. the it feels like the same universe, but it's not that kind of story. It's yeah. just a, a different kind of story happening in that same kind of setting. Yeah, because there are scenes like when he meets his son, they have a duel, and that's like a very wuxia moment. And, yeah, and when the guys sort of fly down with the ropes. At, yeah. uh, at the physician's house that feels like a wuxia moment to me as well and the fight scene in the corridors with the physician's wife when she's in the mm-hmm. in the in the garb that that really felt like a wuxia movie to me um but there's so much like walking in hallways and talking and shuddering from being poisoned and uh you know sort of stately ceremonies going on that you know that you, you're you're wait you know there's there's these big gaps between the fights um, yeah, well, here, here's here's where I would I would make my deciding factor that it's not is the critical climax of the movie all just comes down to decisions made sitting around the table, <laughs> which is <laughs> you know the interactions between people. That's the crucial moment, yeah. not not the fight scene. If if it ended with ended with a sword fight, then then maybe it would have been, but it it doesn't depend on it. Yeah, yeah, because there is a final battle leading right up to the end, but like you say, they go right into the dinner. Not the dinner, but the table scene, and and it's uh and and also the 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 battle was kind of a futile one from the very beginning. Yeah. So yeah, um, and uh, and so I guess I guess we could maybe talk about some of the individual scenes. I mean, obviously, there's a lot to this movie. We're not going to go through the movie beat by beat. We assume people have seen the movie. If they haven't, it's basically about the development of this coup within the palace as the emperor is slowly poisoning his wife and all of this dysfunction is going on in the family amid the sons and 
and there's a, a love story. Well, there there is there is a romantic element between the son and the physician's the court physician's daughter, and there's a secret history in the court that comes to light. And we're going to spoil a lot of that stuff. So if you don't want to know about it, you might want to stop listening now. Um, and I think I think the, the scene to me that I always remember in this movie is the is is uh, uh, the youngest prince is Prince Yu, and he's pretty unassuming. In the movie, I like I I didn't notice him until this scene the first time I watched it, and oh. I I didn't I I and 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 then when I rewatched it for 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 this this episode, I I found myself noticing him a lot because I was like oh I oh I was gonna say I I I kind of had the the I had the opposite reaction I'm like okay there's this third son in here and they have him do nothing so he's he's got to be like Chekhov's gun who's like sitting there in the background waiting to be fired at the end I just I just just for whatever reason something tipped me off about him I was like I was, what's he gonna do I'm with Adam I had him pegged from um I guess the scene where he they were eating at the um mm, the table yeah. on top of the chrysanthemum um terrace after the the father and the second brother came back and he had all the answer right answers to everything but no one was really paying attention to him <laughs> yeah. i'm like yeah he's that bomb that's going to explode at the end it's the quiet ones that you don't <laughs> You have to look out for, don't overlook him, because there's something ticking underneath that surface. Yeah, that was my moment, too. (laughs) I completely missed it. You guys are much smarter than me. Like, the first time I saw this, I was like, whoa, where did that come from? But but then when I rewatched it, you know, you, he's got this strange smile on his face when he's meeting with his brothers. He's always got, like, a, just a weird, almost, almost like there's something wrong with him look on his face. Mm-hmm. And and like you said, his answers are all perfect. Like 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 you don't realize like he's staging a little mini coup of his own this whole time. And mm-hmm. and in the, and the, and in the scene when the when the real coup is starting to unfold, uh, he he has this this firecracker of a coup that he tries to launch. And 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 he begins it by stabbing uh, Prince Juan, the the oldest brother, who's the emperor's favorite son. And we'll we'll get into that too later. But uh, he stabs him in the back kills him and the father like who who up until this point like he's had moments of like anger but huh. nothing like this this is and he just he takes off his belt and he just there's more that goes on in this scene but at the end of it he takes off his belt and he starts beating him to death and he beats him ferociously it's a it's a very it's a very striking scene especially in a movie where like we were saying you're waiting for the fights for a lot of the film there's not there's not an awful lot of fighting in the film and um and so yeah i don't know what what do you guys think of that scene and what do you think it said about the personality of the emperor when when this happened i thought that the beating was totally unexpected for me i expected the father to be mad and just you know take a sword and probably stab him or chop his head off but the beating was actually shocking to me and I thought those were kind of his true colors coming out for the emperor. He's, he always has this sinister quality that's underlying, but he has such a calm demeanor that it doesn't come out. But mm-hmm. you could tell that he was on the battlefield, probably the most ferocious soldier that they had. And that's why he moved up the ranks so quickly and so easily. Yeah, it was uh, it was vicious. I mean, the thing is too, it's like his own son too, on top of everything yeah. else. And it's it's interesting, it's interesting, you know, that that kid, that, like you know, he's he's willing to forgive so much in the other sons. And with that one, it's like, oh, you screwed up. I'm just just gonna kill you in a really horrible, horrible, horrible and, way. And the Empress, who's no friend of the Emperor, just kind of looks at it and walks away. Like, she doesn't seem to really have any strong attachment to that son either during that scene. Yeah. It's it's a very cold, coldly delivered scene because you realize that the, the prince... Because he says when he launches the coup, he, he tells his father to abdicate, and then he says he hates everybody because, like, basically nobody likes him is kind of 
what he sees is like nobody really cares about him and it's basically true nobody nobody really yeah. cares about him and and the father the father is laughing as he kills him and then he goes over the other stun and starts crying um i think though i my reading of that scene is that that prince juan is sort of like the last shred of his old life before he became emperor so it's like the last mm -hmm. part of his real humanity because when he's emperor he's playing a role and everything is sort of staged for that role and and so when Juan dies, it's just like the 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 cape comes off, the the hairpin comes out, that you know everything is sort of revealed, and he's just this you know like the true power of the emperor is seen, and and he's got like the men sort of falling down like spiders around him, the assassins. Um, mm -hmm. It's a it, it's it's a it's a brutally violent scene, but it's I I think it's the most memorable moment in the movie. Um, and I guess the 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 other moment that's kind of memorable and and to me feels really the most sort of rooted in Wuxia, is is when we have the uh, the scenes where the physician's wife is sneaking through the palace serving the empress because the empress needed to find out if if uh, if her medication was being poisoned which it was and the and she, she arrives sort of with a you know black uh, mask on her face and, and black clothing and and she shows the empress that uh yes there's in fact uh black fungus being put into your medicine on a regular basis and it's going to make you crazy over two months and and so the, but as she's leaving she sees prince juan and we don't know that so this woman is prince juan's real birth mother and we don't know this yet and she starts following him and then that leads to her capture and but there's a fight sequence all around that and there's also a really important moment where she's brought before the emperor and there's this whole backstory where we know Prince Swan has a different mother. And all we're told up until this point is that his mother died when he was young. And it turns out, no, his mother didn't die. The emperor did this really cold thing where he arranged for her and her family to be arrested. And then she was branded in the face. And then he made arrangements with the king of Liang to marry his daughter, who's the current empress, so that he could become emperor. And, and then what ended up happening to his former wife was she married... The, uh, the court physician, which I guess the emperor didn't realize somehow. And mm -hmm. the court physician didn't even really realize. And and so his doom was sown by this act of compassion for this, this woman with a face, facial branding of a criminal. Um, but I don't know, what you guys think of that scene? There's a lot in there, obviously. And I probably left out some crucial details, but... Well, I thought the scene was interesting because when her, well, I want to back up to the, where she's talking to the Empress, I guess, because I thought that scene was pretty interesting with the branding of the face and that coming almost on the heels of Prince Juan being caught with uh, Chan in the chamber and the whole, um, the court people saying that the, the punishment would be for her to be whipped and her um, face to be branded yeah. and then sent away from the um, from the palace. And then here comes this woman and her face has been branded. So it kind of makes you think at first that, you know, maybe this woman had gotten caught with someone she shouldn't have been with, but then her little story comes out, which I kind of, when she took the, thing off her face in the presence of the empress i thought that she might be the mother of um juan because she kind of resembled the painting and it just was kind of um i don't know coincidental or convenient that you know things would happen this way i don't know i just thought that the scene was great and he sh when he was speaking to her telling her that he owed her a lot i've I knew that what he owed her was going to be death because you got away once you escaped from the prison and got away and your secret could come out and haunt me in the end. So I've got to kill you now well, for see, sure. I would disagree with that. I don't think he decided to kill her at that point. I think he decided to kill her later on when the Empress came to offer like the next day, the Empress uh, arrives in the, um, in the shrine to his former wife, who's the doctor's wife. And, and and they have a really oblique conversation 
and I think that that's the thing that prompts him to 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 send the assassins. Um, I could be wrong though. That's that's maybe too charitable. Maybe, maybe he was that cold that he was he was, like I don't know. What do you think, Adam? Do you think he was planning it from the I, very beginning? I think it was because she she was working with the empress. I think mm-hmm. that's why. So I think I think you might be right. That conversation is what set it off. Because I mean, he even says that to her. You know, later it says, "Look, you shouldn't have." Or you know, it's when she confronts him, when she confronts him later in the movie. You know that that's actually what he says. It's like you know, you you shouldn't have worked with the empress. That's it. That's the reason he had to kill her. It wasn't you know other than that. But I think that line that you mentioned is really loaded with meaning because he says to her, like uh, you know what, like I forget exactly what he says, but he says something like, "Whatever I owe you, I will pay you in full." Like. Like and, mm. and then the next scene, they're conferring all these honors on her husband. He's going to be the governor of a province, and he has to go immediately to live there. And then he, he yeah. goes there, and everything. It's funny because this has a really we, the time the way time moves in this movie is very strange because you have these hourly uh, announcements of of you know it's the hour of the snake, it's the hour of the monkey, but there are periods in the movie where clearly days, days have, have to passed. be going by. Yeah. But, but it doesn't feel like days are going by. It feels like everything that's going on in the palace is all happening over the course of a single day. Or So I don't know if that's just to mess with the viewer or if this is like really a surreal experience. But uh, but I, he, think, I oh, think part of it is just that the way this, the unchanging nature of the palace, mm-hmm. it is just kind of out. It's this mm-hmm. really insular place. <laughs> it's, just, it's just unpleasant. I think I think the time thing works with that. Yeah, yeah, because you definitely feel like like you're just stuck in this moment that just is unchanging, and and the yeah the pal- every, the halls all look the same, like mm-hmm. the rooms all look the same. Every like mm-hmm. it all looks beautiful, but it all looks the same, and it's it's it, and, and I mean it's definitely there, there's like a uh, you know an opinion about it being inserted into the way that it's being depicted, and and the but then when they uh, when when the, the court physician. Who was the one that's poisoning the empress? Uh, you know, he's he, him and his daughter are the ones that are overseeing that whole project. Uh, he gets sent to be governor, and uh, Prince Juan uh, goes to follow them to to uh, and and he has a he, number one. This is where the incest revelation happens, where we learn. Uh, or it, no, actually, it's not. It's it's where it's where we get a a strong hint that that. Uh, that there is a so so it was a strong hint for you but confirmation for others yes <laughs> yes so but 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 the characters don't know yet is my point the right. characters the characters don't get the revelation um but prince juan is is in having very complicated relationships in the palace he, at the very beginning of the movie we learn that he's been uh intimate with the empress for three years and at first Again, your reaction is, oh, my God, they're having an incestuous relationship. But, she, you know, it's explained in the dialogue that they're not they're not blood related, that, that she's not his actual mother. And 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 then he ends up having this relationship with Chan, the woman that we mentioned in the other scene where uh, she gets caught in the bedroom with him. And the and the the empress asks what the punishment for seducing the prince is. And and so it turns out that Chan is the daughter of of the of uh their their brother and sister their brother and sister and and so prince juan is just kind of like surrounded by incest at every move it's a um it's it's and and i think this is this movie is based on a play i think it's called thunderstorm and i think that's like the most sensational aspect of the play that caused it to be um like that's what kind of made it famous but but anyways we get this we get the scene where he goes to the uh, the court physician's new residence, and the mother finds them together, and she freaks out like she she can't eat. And we've seen she's a very like she's a very capable woman. Like she like she was just fighting in the palace a few moments ago, and she she can't even say why they can't be in the same room together. She just starts telling him to to get out, and and the prince leaves, and then she goes after him, and then that's when the assassins are sent to. Uh, to kill the uh, the physician's family, and and this is all sort of in the scene that's sort of leading up to the big coup. So, but I don't know. What do you guys think of that whole section of the movie where the where the the assassins just kind of they, again they fly down like spiders on on strands of silk, 
and it's just a very interesting scene. Well, to me, the um, the, the assassins coming after the physician's family was confirmation of what um, the emperor has said about uh, paying what he owed mm. in full and having them be executed. She would have to die. Otherwise all his secrets would spill out and everything could be ruined. But the whole scene, the way it was shot, the mother just was so adamant about them not being in the room together or being together at all as a couple that, you know, you could tell that it was paining her in her face. And then, you know, the physician has no idea of any of her backstory. So he's all confused. And all these little people are coming down out of spider webs. And I thought the assassins were really, really cool. They were like one of my favorite parts of the movie. I mean, it was just like, I wasn't expecting ninja style assassins they are just so quiet sneaking up on everybody they're completely covered you don't even see really their eyes their costuming was really cool and i mean they're just ferocious i thought they were pretty awesome but the mother could handle herself with a sword and the look the father gave when he sent the wife away and he turns around and he knows he's going to die, but it's like, I'm going to defend my family to the end. And I, you could tell what kind of man he was. He would have been an honorable man if it had not been for his relationship with the emperor. Yeah. But he had to do it because it was the emperor. And you don't say no to the emperor. The, the whole time he's in the palace, he has that look on his face. He's just totally blank. Like you can just tell he knows like any wrong move can just end in catastrophe. And, and, and I feel like, yeah. yeah, this is a scene where you kind of, like your, you, your respect for him goes way up in that moment. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, well, I mean, it's interesting. It is, it is everyone's goal seems to, I mean, not everyone's, but it's like both, you know, getting out of the palace is like a reward. You'd think like, <laughs> Oh, getting to go, I get to go work at the Imperial palace. That's the No, the reward is, is all oh, you're get, You're going to get to go do something else. That's what. <laughs> What what uh, Juan wants, that's what, you know, their reward is. It's like you just, just want to get out of that horrible, horrible place. And yeah, no, yeah, and yeah, every everybody does seem to want out of there. Um and uh what about the fragrant chair scene? Because this came up before the podcast where uh throughout the movie the Emperor's generally depicted as a pretty sort of strong and powerful figure, but there are a few scenes of him in this sedan chair that's this this it's almost like a thick hollow sedan chair with uh space to contain various steaming herbal medicines and they fill it up with all of these concoctions and then they 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 lay him in the chair and then they wrap him in a in a golden blanket and he just looks so weak and feeble when he when he gets back after after his uh exchange with prince jai and I, I was a little perplexed. I, I, I still am perplexed by this. I'm trying to figure out if it means anything. If, if he's, if he's really like, if like there's something wrong with him that he's concealing from, from us the, the whole movie, and this is our only window into it, or if it's just him really tired from a journey on the road. Um, but it seems like more than that because it's like Chow Yun Fat is a good actor, and I feel like he made like a real choice to be as diminutive as possible in that scene. Yeah, he looked really, really small and helpless. They, I mean, they actually lifted him in the chair and the girls uh, tucked his legs in and then they wrapped him in this blanket like a baby. And after the fierce exchange that he had with Prince Jai at the official inn, it was like, yeah, I know he's in heavy gold armor, but when he was in the fight scene with his son, it didn't look like he was breaking a sweat. He didn't look overworked. He looked very strong and virile and, you know, on top of his game. But then you switch over to the scene and it's he's gone from this strong, virile, overpowering man to almost this weak, helpless baby. And it made me think that there was maybe 
some kind of underlying illness that we don't know about, which got me to thinking that, you know, the whole exchange with his son was to make sure that he would be fit because later we find out that Juan doesn't even want to be the emperor eventually and would rather it go to um, Prince Jai. And he was just wanted to make sure that he was fit to take over. And maybe he was, I don't know, poisoning his wife so that she would die before him. And I don't know. It was just got too com- confusing in my brain as I was well, thinking the scenario. <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting if you look at all these threads. Like, if he's if he's sick and actually dying, and Juan doesn't want to be the prince and is willing to pass it off to Jai, and it's like, if nobody had done anything, everybody, I mean, obviously the emperor would have died, but everyone would have got what they wanted. It's like, none of this subterfuge I basically all this all this trickery and stuff people were up to pretty much made this huge tragedy and then nobody got what they wanted. Well, the only thing that wouldn't would have happened was the empress would have died within two months because remember True. the fungus being at, added would have True. killed her in, within two months. So his illness might have. I guess, I guess how sick he was. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> well, you don't I know think... who would have went first, but. I, I think, too, uh, he even kind of says that to them, right? Like, he's like, at the end, he's like, I, I gave you, like, every warning. Like, like you know, don't take what I'm going to give to you. And, and like, yeah. you know, and, and, he, and he like, he's kind of like, how much clearer could I be? And with her, see, I was always, I, I wasn't sure, is she dying or is she just going crazy? Because they said it makes you mad at the end of two months, right? But did they ever say that she's going to die or was that, like, she no, looked she's like... No, she's going to die. It's going to, I think, it, I think it just, it just makes you... Like it makes you just crazy. Like yeah, well, she said, almost, or... she said that um, the emperor is going to get what he wants. I'm going to die as a Cretan. Yeah, she so did. that she was going to go crazy and then die. But I thought that yeah. maybe she was just saying that to manipulate Prince Jai. But I don't know because oh, it was, we said we were, elsewhere. Well, I think I think I think the physician said I that think like the you me- said it like earlier. mentally ineffectual in some way. I forget the term he used, but. but... Yeah, because and we're going through subtitles, so it's you know it's yeah that's that's true. the other aspect of this. But whatever the the case, what I want to know is why is like I, I understand why the emperor might be poisoning him, but why is he doing this at this crucial moment when that could be the very thing that's like is this chrysanthemum conspiracy that she comes up with is that a product of her own rational thinking or is that a product of the madness from the black <laughs> fungus like uh. you know? Well, I think she might have been planning this. Um for a while I, I don't know that's just my sneaking suspicion but they had just added the um black fungus 10 days before so i think yeah, she was planning to wait before 10 days okay. than that um because they had the order the flowers and i mean to get ten thousand flowers to have ten thousand <laughs> scarves made for the troops to come and I mean that takes an awful lot of planning. You can't yeah. just do that in in ten days. I don't think in that time. But now the things are mass produced. It might have been different. But I think she was planning uh, for a long time because I think she was planning on having her cake and eating it yeah. too, with Jai being prince and then uh, Juan being her lover. And you know, so and then the third oh. son she didn't care about. That was really like the no. the spare. You, I, you know, know what? I didn't care about him either. I don't think anybody cared about the third son. No, no. <laughs> I felt well, bad we're not, we're for not, him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you mentioned the so flowers cool. though, and ordering the difficult difficulty of ordering the flowers. One thing that struck me is like near the end of the movie when after the coup has failed and everything, it's like the emperor as part of his plans to counter the coup also ordered an additional 10,000 to replace exactly. those flowers. Was- I was just like, wow, that's, <laughs> That's just a beautiful touch there. And they had cleaned up like nothing ever happened, you know? Yeah. They were just sweeping the bodies away, and then now come people with flowers and putting them back, and I mean, it was just surreal. They really do show, like, the power of the emperor through all of the various <laughs> menial tasks that need to be performed in the ta- yes. palace because you just yeah. have this this army of people that just will they'll just fill up the whole field with plants in an instant and even even the defensive measures they take you know that final battle where prince jai is 
marching his golden troops into the palace and there's this wall of it's almost like a shield wall i, I don't know what mm-hmm. it was but it was like it was it was, was really awesome. tall and there were men standing above it firing arrows down and it was and there were men pushing it into place and pushing over the um, golden warriors and it was just amazing yeah, visually, I thought that looked really nice. I thought it kind of reminded yeah, it me. Stunning. What was that? I said it was stunning. Yeah, it reminded me of um, the scene in Spartacus where you have the, the Roman soldiers marching in a trail in the background. And it's just this long red trail to show the power of Rome. And I thought it's, you know, it's it's this is a whole different thing. But I just kept thinking back to that. But um, but yeah, so I don't know uh, the the so. So, yeah, so we had the. The, the I guess the other issue, and we've touched on it, is the relationship with Prince Juan um, and the Empress. Like, But not just the relationship between him and her, but the relationship between him and his father as well. Because I think that's... Uh, there's a, a lot of the drama that unfolds during the coup all revolves around Juan and, and their different feelings towards him. Um, you know, obviously the, the Empress is having an affair with him. And and that seems to be something that's a possible motivating factor in in staging the coup. Um, but the emperor is like he's his favorite son, and he does makes no attempt to hide this. And he's the only son that he really doesn't like. This son betrays him like in the worst possible way. He sleeps with his wife, right? And and he doesn't even. He, there's no retribution. There's, there's no, you know, like the, any of the other sons, he probably would have done something terrible to them. Um, so mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. What do you guys think of that relationship? I guess. I think it's, I don't know. I, I'm thinking that it's a traditional relationship between a father and his firstborn son are always the closest, especially in such a, fi- a filial, um, culture as the Chinese culture is the the first son that's born is everything you know so you can he could possibly in most cases do no wrong but that shows how dysfunctional this whole family is with the fact that he could betray his father like that and he actually Juan felt bad about it but the mother wanted to keep going but I don't know the father I think was poisoning her because of the affair that's part of my thinking but the the whole relationship be- between all three of them was really strange yeah i uh as far as, as, as the only interesting thing about juan is that you know he is he is the one that that everyone seems to like i mean he seems to get on well with jai too it's like i mm-hmm. we see some scenes with them they get on well he gets on well with his father obviously he's gets on well with the empress in a different way but uh it's, it, but you know, basically, it's like it's like you know, with with you when he makes his big move, it's like killing killing a uh, Juan. It's like you've made you know, it's like okay, nobody liked you, and now you've killed the one person that everybody <laughs> in the family can yeah. go. You know, Juan's okay, he's all right, and you just flat out murdered him. And it, you know, it's like that. That's the point. I mean. This wasn't a movie where it ever felt like it was going to have a happy ending, but that was like the point where there is absolute nobody is getting a happy ending out of this thing with him dead. It's it's over. Uh, yeah. uh, well, what did you think of Juan himself? Because it's funny, like he's everybody likes him, but I don't know that I found him all that likable <laughs> as a character because he's like I, mean, I think the yeah. acting was fine. I just feel like as a character, he was very he almost I mean he kind of had a Quasimodo aspect to him like like the way that the guy portrayed him he was kind he was always sort of hunched over and unsure of himself and he just you know and in certain scenes he would like twist his body as he was talking to all you know so he was kind of like he had like a monstrous demeanor um Mm -hmm. and he just he just was always sort of flinching and never seemed you know he could have been like number one in the whole household and he just he just for whatever reason, he seemed to be never at ease with himself, probably because of all the, all of the betraying of his father that he was doing. But, um, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just, so I just thought that was interesting that he was like one of the more likable characters in the household, but I, I found him hard to like. I found him kind of detached. 
Um, the only person that I think that he actually truly cared for was Chan. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I felt bad when they had, they found out that they were brother and sister because then he has, you know, he's just not going to make it through the rest of the movie and neither is she. That's just some upsetting news to find out about your family. But I, I really didn't like him that much either. Jai was my favorite brother you I felt sorry for just because he is the third brother and he was being so overlooked. Even he just couldn't do anything right in anybody's eyes in the whole entire household. So I really felt bad for him. But um, yeah, I didn't feel one way or the other really about Juan until he found out that is the one person that he loved more than anything was his sister. Yeah, and she I think, I think, freaks out when she finds that out. Yeah, she, she runs yeah. away screaming, and then gets stabbed by one of those black garbed assassin guys. And it's uh, that's a that was a brutal scene. I thought that was like, uh, I I mean I you knew it was coming, but it was still kind of a surprise when she when she ran into the blade. Mm-hmm. But I'm sorry, Adam, you were going to say something. I think I cut you off. Oh, just just getting back to the characterization of one. I feel like. I feel like we're seeing him at a point where he's just fallen apart. It's yeah. like probably if we saw him like a year earlier, he might have been a much more charming. Because actually, <laughs> in the scene with Sean, the scene with him and Sean together in his room, it's like he is that. He, that's the most relaxed and pleasant yeah. we see him. That's when he actually gets to be himself. But every other scene, I mean, it's because I mean, I mean, the Empress isn't his real mother, but she is the mother figure in his life. And so he's like caught in the middle of this horrible conflict between, you know, his father and his mother, which is which is damaging to anybody to some extent. And it's it's even more extreme when your father is literally poisoning your mother and your mother is is plotting to overthrow and kill your father. So I just I just think, you know, at the point this movie starts, we we're not we're not we never really get to see what everyone else sees in one. That's like kind of dead at that point. Well, there is that scene when he comes back from the, um, I think from the physician's house, and he, uh, after he's just learned that she was making all these chrysanthemums and that she sent them to the general, and mm-hmm. and he confronts her because at that point he puts all the pieces together and he knows what she's doing, and and it becomes a, a fight between the two of them where he he says to her, like, you know, if you go through this, people are going to think I did it, you know, you, you, do you want me yeah. dead? And then he he basically he digs at her and says she's a lunatic, and that obviously causes her to lash out and say, "Yes, I want you dead," even though you don't think she really wants that. But he then no. stabs himself in the upper chest, and you know when he's recovering, his father comes in and is very gentle and soothing, but he is terrified of it. like the look of absolute horror on his face. You know, you know, so see. This this that fear is not new. I think I think that fear is present in him the whole time because he must know if his father finds out about any of this, he's a dead man. So yeah. it's a uh, you know even though when it does come to light, at least on the surface, the father doesn't blame him and he blames the empress and you know unless he's pulling the same sort of shenanigans that he pulled with uh, the <laughs> doctor. Uh, um, but I don't think so. I think with Juan, he's sincere. I feel like with Juan, his affection is very sincere. Um, yeah. But... Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think Juan is the one that he truly loved in the family, and Jai was the one he respected because he was powerful out on the um, field as he was. So he knew that it, the country would be in capable hands when he did die if he should give the throne to him but i think juan was the only one in that household that truly had the emperor's heart yeah i guess to an extent to the fact that juan is kind of a wreck in this movie is in his favor because this 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 stuff is tearing himself apart which you know shows some of you know, it, it, you know, it's it, it's it's like you know he's not 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 in any way callous like his father or anything. Yeah, yeah. He, he, the queen, or the empress, and the emperor don't really seem to lose a lot of sleep over these horrible things that they're doing. Um, yeah, you know, like the the emperor, the emperor has done some truly questionable things, and you know, like like the when the when his former wife returns, you know, you know the. the 
it, it's a very strange scene because he, you know, all of these awful things that he did to her, and then just knowing sort of what's coming down the pike. It's uh, again, though, I think I think part of it is that he's in a role, he's an emperor that is so much bigger than the individual that it's sort of like there's a scene in the movie where he says to to the empress you know that we, we we have to you know we play our roles well like we have to play them perfectly and so i feel like a lot of it is is even he like for all of his the bad things that he's doing i think he's just as sort of constricted by all of the things that are going on and it's also interesting that like we get we get a number of scenes where they where they lay out these four virtues of loyalty, filial piety, ritual, and righteousness. So these Confucian virtues, and they pretty much all get trampled <laughs> by everybody by the end. Um, you know, it's like it's like the, the, it's like it's like the complete unraveling of the social fabric that's you know supposed to exist at this time. And uh, yeah, and and it's and it's the sort of the the doom of the household. Um, but it's also really interesting to sort of I don't know when you think this movie is set kind of in the same location as Hero in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like Hero is mm-hmm. set in the in the Imperial Palace. I mean, this might be a different Imperial Palace, but it's still an Imperial Palace. Uh, and and that's sort of like to me like the beginning. And this is kind yeah. of like the culmination. And so that's why I was saying, you know, you know, again, I don't really, you know, worry too much about the 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 political meanings of the movie because I don't. I don't know what the director was necessarily intending, but if you're going to have that kind of conversation, I feel like you got to watch all of them because there's a, yeah. there's a trajectory that, that occurs over the course of the movies. Um, and I kind of like, how yeah, this like, is, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was saying, yeah, I was saying this, what you're seeing in this movie is not the vision that the first emperor has in hero. That's like, that is not, not at all what he was trying to build. (laughs) But it's interesting that they still like, you know, like the whole thing of under everything under heaven. And, you know, a lot of the Mm -hmm. drama occurs around that table that is, you know, a representation of, of everything under heaven. You know, it's the, you know, the circular heaven and then the square table representing the earth. And I mean, they explain this very clearly. It's not it's not like an obscure thing. It's you know, they state it multiple times. And I don't know. It's it's, it's kind of interesting. I like I think I think I don't know. Do you think all three of these because they, they are kind of a sequence of films like they're they're definitely way different from his earlier movies. Do you think that these work as a coherent, connected series of films or are they just linked by martial arts in a lot of color like? It's easier to link this and Hero, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, House of Flying Daggers feels very different. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, if, I, if I did more thinking, I could probably come up with something, which mm-hmm. may or may not be what the director intended, but I could definitely make something out of it. Cause it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of where you have a, you know, a revolt against the Empire going on. So, I mean, maybe you could work that in, but I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't feel as much as I do with the first and third films. Yeah, I agree. I see more of a connection between Hero and uh, Curse of the Golden Flower. Just some of the dialogue brought me back to um, Hero. Mm-hmm. and But House of Flying Daggers just, to me, seems like its own movie on its standalone kind of movie for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess the, the one common thread is tragic endings for everybody. But that's, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, uh, what about the, um, the ending? Uh, what did you, what did you guys think of that ending? The, not, not the final battle, but the one we talked about before where they, they have a conversation around the table and Prince Jai is told that he'll be forgiven if he administers the mo- the mother's medicine personally. And he ends up slitting his own throat. And then she ends up, she kind of freaks out and and knocks the 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 medicine onto the table and it and it burns it it burns the gold like acid, um, and then we get the credits. Uh, yeah, I was kind of disappointed in that that ending the way it just ended with the um, medicine being thrown and it uh, eating away at the table. I don't know. I think I would have needed a more definitive ending of what happened to the Empress. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Um, I kind of expected what happened with Jai because the whole the whole poisoning of his mother was very upsetting for him. That's why he joined the um, the coup in the first place because he wasn't willing to to jump in and help her at the beginning until he had to keep watching her take this poison over and over again. And yeah, I knew he wasn't going to make sure that she took it. I was hoping that he would say, yes, I'll oversee it and then not be willing to give her the poison. But I knew that was high hopes uh, thinking. Hmm. So, you know, it was kind of expected. He wasn't going to, to administer it. So he was going to have to die. Yeah, I, I know. I like the ending, actually. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's ambiguous, and I, I get what you're saying, but uh, it's, I don't know. I, I, I can't really put my finger on, I, I can't explain it, but it would work for me. Well, I think I think my reading of the ending is that her madness is sort of complete, and that, like, yeah. like, like the son kills himself, and that drives her over the edge. And so mm. when she does it, like, there's, an, there's probably not even any need for future doses at that point. And yeah, and then the acid spills over the table, which we know is everything under heaven. So that's presumably like, you know, it's the it's it's it the I think the the ramifications of all this stuff going on the palace is much greater than 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 it might seem. Uh, so I, I think that's but, but again, I do I do agree. It's sort of an it, it sort of ends like in a on a very strange uh I don't know, like a very strange movement. It doesn't it, like a lot of these movies. They end in a very clear way, and and this one definitely, it's it's an odd, it is an odd choice. But what I like about it is when they sort of fold, when they when they pan back on the table, I I think that's a very effective final shot. Um, and uh, and also you don't see any of the imperial household in that final. You just see the table, and so it's kind of it's kind of haunting as a result. Yeah. Um, but. But I don't know. What do you What do you think happened to the? Do you think the emperor moved on and and and, and got a new heir? Do you, like, where where do you think things go from here? Yeah, that's a good question. I, uh... Yeah, that brought me back to if he is really sick, then he's going to need someone. So maybe he's going to scout around for someone. Uh, to replace the empress because now he has no children and that would just cause the whole country to be up in, a, a, you know, up in disorder. And he had said that uh, when he was talking to the empress that about playing their perfect roles, that the way that their household runs and the way that their marriage is, is basically how the country goes. So if they fall apart, the country falls apart. So... You know, you kind of wonder what's going to happen to the country because this family couldn't keep it together. And uh, and yeah, I, th I think it's um, and I think they did give us an actual date for the. I mean, it is. I think it's towards the end of the Tang, right? So presumably, it was yeah. nine twenty six or yeah. something like that. Yeah, so it's pretty close. So things do kind of start unraveling soon. Um, but but again, I don't. I but also I think the dates have been. I think. I've heard different things on the dates of this movie where I think some versions of it have different, different dates given. So I don't know. Um, mm. But, but yeah, so I don't know any, any, any additional thoughts on things that I didn't bring up any, any, uh, anything that you thought was really great about it or really terrible or worth talking about. I've covered most of my thoughts at the moment. Yeah, I think we pretty much covered the whole the whole movie. I think it was a really good family drama with fighting thrown in. Yeah, I uh, I, I think it's 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 I definitely uh, enjoy this movie. I think that um, I think like I said, of the three films, I would place it at number two presently. Um, and it isn't it, but but. I think if you tell people, oh, this is a great martial arts movie or a great wuxia movie, uh, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be unpleasantly surprised because they'll be expecting a lot of fighting and there won't be. 
And yeah. And also, I think people react very differently to this movie. I made the mistake of watching it with my father the first time I saw it, mm. and and he was very uh, number one. Any movie featuring these kind of themes, you don't want to watch with a parent. It's just a general rule. But, but <laughs> yeah. number two, he was very confused by a lot of the plot developments and uh, and, and and choices that were made during the movie. Um, so he and, and 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 I will also say this: if you do watch this film, watch it with the subs. The dubs on it are they really do a disservice to the movie, and they. I had a much more negative reaction the first time I watched it because I watched it with dubs. And then when I rewatched it with with subs like a year later or something, I had a much more positive reaction. So I, I, w- I would say go for the subs on this one. And and uh, and yeah, so I will I will end it here uh, again. This is Wusha Weekend. You can support us on our Patreon, which I'll link below in the description. And next week, I believe we're going to do Painted Skin Resurrection, which I'm really looking forward to because that's a little different than things we've done before. So uh, I think we're going to get a lot of different opinions on it. Um, and if you have any thoughts or questions about the upcoming movie, or if you have any thoughts on this film that you want to share with us, let us know. We can try to bring them into the program. Um, you know the you know, asking about uh, whether this was Wuxia or not is it you know was largely a product of seeing people mention that uh, when when we when we were asking online about it. So uh, it's always good to hear from people, and we will talk to you later.